recognition this year, but going back to when you were getting recruited, do you remember your initial meeting with Coach Pittman and what your first impression of him was? Um, my first impression is kind of funny. I think I told the media before, but um, my first impression when I first saw Coach Pittman, he came to my school and I was playing basketball. And like my very first time seeing him, I talked to him before the phone, just at the third, but um, he came to my school and I see him, I'm like, oh man. I was in class doing work, but they called me down and like, saw him hurry get to basketball practice. So as I go to basketball practice, I change my clothes, I'm in layup line. Next thing you know, I go for a layup, I miss the layup. I was like, oh man, my first impression for Coach Pittman is Solomon Hill is not an athlete. He's missed his first wide open layup with nobody on him, just missed it. But um, other than that, it really showed that Coach Pittman is, is a father figure to you, not just on the field, on the field. He's going to push you to be great as a player and a man every day. Did you bring up the missed layup at all? Oh, you guys he, he says that almost every day. <laughs> I could be act like I'm playing basketball, you missed the layup. He, he brings that up every day. He says something about me missing that layup. Don't matter what time it is, what day it is, what's going on, he gonna say something about that layup. <laughs> so on um, this offense, um, over the past, I guess, five or six games, a lot of criticism, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's being viewed by a lot of, by many people as the weak link. Um, you know, what are you guys doing in, in practice in terms to kind of clean up the execution and start to click? Because, I mean, the points have been down for the past five games. We don't listen to the outside. We keep what we can keep inside. That's our family and our brotherhood. So we're going to work every day, no matter what nobody say, because like you said, when we're up, we, they say we're the best, and when we're down, they say we're the worst. So that's that's what a team is. We just come together every day, and we fight. We try to get better every day. We don't worry about nobody say, because the only thing that matters is what's in front of us and what we got going on to this day. So as a player who's already been injured <coughs> that this year, is there something that you tell Lawrence every week with his nagging injury that just keeps sitting? Uh, Lawrence, you know, Lawrence, he's a vet anyway, come from, coming from Miami. All I, get, all I do is tell him is get treatment, try to get healthy, the healthy as you can. And Lawrence stay in the treatment. He gets here every morning with Mr. Ron, get treatment every day, try to be better every day. So that's all I pretty much tell him is to take it slow, but do, do as much as you can. Do as much as you can and get treatment. Stay in the training room from practice to sun up to sundown. So that's just my main thing. I can get him tips on about getting healthy. How tough was the process for you coming back just mentally, you know, not being out there with your teammates? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a bit, that was very hard because I wanted the leaders on the team and not only lead on the team, leaders on the offensive line. So that right there, it was, it, was, it was very emotional and kind of tough for me seeing that my brothers grind and everything and I wasn't able on the field. But I know it's, it's, I got, God got a plan for me. So he, I went down for a little bit. I got back up and got back up even stronger, so that's the only thing I'm grateful for. Clark's been playing a lot of really good football for oh, you yeah, guys yeah. lately on the defensive side. What's it, you know, you've been going up against him, I guess, for a long time, yeah. good on good stuff. What's it like trying to face a guy like that, and, and what kind of problems does he give you? Like you said, Tyler Clark is just, he just, he just, he just has brought in, he brought in, not, not saying that he never was brought in, but he just brought in even more. Like, he put in that extra work, extra time that nobody really sees, like recovery. One of the biggest things that nobody even knows about. They only see that him, yeah, he's in the film room, yeah, he eat right, do all that type of stuff, but he recover, he recovers. Like, he's in a hot tub, cold tub, getting his body right, getting massage on the times, on the days he can. And not only that, he puts in work in practice. The practice, you, you, you work hard in practice, the game is easy. So, that's, he, he practices very hard. We've seen the D-line be dominant this year against other teams. When did you all start to see them turn uh, in practice and scrimmages? Me personally, I always thought the D-line was going to be very good. Jordan Davis, Michael Barnett, Tyler Clark, David Marshall, Malik Heron. I just always thought it was going to be dominant because, like you say, I go, I've been going to get some since I've been here. So it's just I just always knew that that time was coming. You feel me? So I just always knew how hard they work and how much they do. I knew. Eventually, he was going to just come out and everybody, the whole nation was going to be aware because the whole team was on the where The games are running up front for the offensive line, defensive line. The, so The spring, like during the spring, before the spring, going back to last year, I mean, was there a point when they were starting to really hold their own with you guys? Um, it's, it really, it, I, I really don't, I really can't tell the point in time where you, you feel me, I knew where they were just, this, this much just getting better. It's just always been like they always been a dominant group, but it's just sometimes on on the field never just shown. But now like this year, they are not doing too much different. They had they'd always been doing. I always knew that was going to be a very good group. So I mean, you're a fourth year junior, right? Oh uh, yeah. 
Coach Virginia. Yeah, Rich Virginia. Do you, during the season, uh, have you had the initial conversations with Coach Pittman, with uh, Kirby, to talk about what you might do after the season so they can recruit to the position if need oh, be? Oh, no, nah, we ain't talk about none of that. We focusing on this year and this year only. So you never had a conversation with them? Though? No. Okay. Have you thought about it much in terms of, uh, you know, whether, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys on this offensive line that, that might be playing their last home game? No, I'm just focusing on college football today and Texas A&M this week. Three made up Jamar Sire this year and sort of, you know, how he's progressed to this point, even though, you know, sometimes he might be playing due to injuries, you know, when throwing, he might not be. Um, Jamar, he's a, he's a, he's a very good player. Like, Every day on Thursdays, Coach Pittman come in, he talk about our grades, and he tell us what's going on in the, in, in the football world and everything. And every time he gets to Jamar, he always gives Jamar his props because he's not only is he a good player, but he's not playing as much, but he's a great person. He's a great person in our offensive line room. Without Jamar, I don't think we would be as successful as we are on the field because Jamar brings so many aspects to the field that nobody really knows about, like the brotherhood, the family, the camaraderie that he brings, like the, the good energy, the good vibes, and all type of stuff. So Jamar is a very good person, and he's going to be very good. He's going to have a, a very bright future. When you guys had that third touchdown drive on Saturday, he was in there right guard. Yeah. The whole time. I mean, is it, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't surprise you at all that this came in. You guys didn't miss a beat. Uh, that's like I said. How cool Pittman and how the University of Georgia is, next man up mentality. The next, the man that's behind you, you're just as good as you, probably even better. Just not playing at the moment. So it's just when Jamar gets his time, he's going to go in, he's going to do what he has to do. And that's for everybody on the team. When anybody goes down, we pick up their slack, we put, their brother, we put our brother on our back, and we just go to work. It might not necessarily be your last home game, but as you watch your teammates who are playing their last home game, what are the emotions like there for those seniors? Oh yeah, it's not. not it's, it's it's very much more emotion. Uh, I want to take it out for my brother, like Tyler Clark, Brian Heron, all the boys, because coming in, those was my those was my like the first people I even met when I first even got to Georgia. So yeah, it's gonna be some emotion because I know it's their last game. Might not be able to. They might not be. Uh, might not play with them anymore. So I put it all on the line for the boys. Selma, so, for you, you gone through the story about getting you know, cookies when you guys have a good performance oh, yeah. in line, but what happens when you guys do give up a sack? Are there any extra sprints like practice or anything like that? Oh no, when we give up a sack, it's not, it's not, it's not like punishment, but we beat ourselves up to the point where we want to be perfect. So when that type, when stuff like that comes about, we get in the film room, we be like, well, how are we gonna fix this? Why did you mess up? Was it the scheme? Was it your technique? Was it he just outbeat you? Did he out effort you? Just what, what, what happened? So when it, when it, when when we give up a sack. We, we come together, we don't beat each other up, we don't celebrate, we don't just make each other run, we just think about the way we'll give up another one.